Okay, so you ready? You ready? Okay, good evening everybody and uh, welcome to tonight's planning control meeting. Uh, before we go any further, can I just ask if you either switch off your mobiles or put them on silent? Just a couple of things before we move on to the agenda. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome Councillor Rawson back to the uh, Planning Control Committee. And also, uh, Councillor Jed Potter as the new chair. Look forward to working with you. And I'd like to extend my thanks and gratitude to Lucy for being an able vice chairperson last year and uh, supporting me when needed. Moving on to the agenda, uh, apologies. I think I've got one from Councillor Nawaz. Anybody else? No, Chair. Thank you. Late items to be introduced by me, there are none. Uh, declarations of interest, anybody? No. Okay, minutes of the meeting held on the 7th of April, 2022. Anybody like to move them? Thank you. Uh, minutes of the meeting of the Conservation and Heritage Advisory Committee, which was held on the 3rd of March, 2022. Thank you. Uh, Development Control Performance Quarter for January to March, and I think Paul's going to tell us about that. Thank you, Chair. Before I do, I'll just say um, I, I did hold a training session this evening, this afternoon. Um, I know some of your members couldn't attend. Um, I do hope to make more of those training sessions and uh, roll them out, perhaps in advance of this meeting. Uh, I'll give you an advance warning. Um, just a general flavour of how planning's progressing. It's topical at the moment with the government and things are changing. And I'd like to keep you all up to speed with how things are, are progressing, how things are moving. Um, but we had a, an interesting debate, uh, Councillor Holmes and I, earlier. and. <laughs> And, and Councillor Holmes will be feeding back to everybody um, later on. Um, in terms of uh, development control performance, um, it's in your report. I'd just like to highlight a couple of factors on page two. You'll note that determination of the majors, major applications and minor applications is well above the government targets. The government targets is 60 and eight, sorry, 60 and 70 percent respectively, where we're at 85 and 84, which. Um, most of those applications, 99% were made under delegated powers, uh, which I think is a credit to the staff given that um, we're emerging from COVID now. Uh, despite, yes, despite everything that's been going on, the, the turbulent times we've had, uh, the team have stuck with it, uh, not without problems, not without issues, but we've, we've uh, kept the, the, the applications churning out through the process. In terms of appeals, on page three, you'll note that um, the, the, the criteria is that we don't lose or don't have a more than 10% overturned at appeal. And our fantastic number is under 1%. So collectively, officers and councillors, we make the right decisions and are supported by uh, the planning inspectorate. And you'll note over the page on page four that um, in the paragraph 4.14, you'll see how the figures are in put, being put in context since 2014 onwards, where again, massive congratulations to the staff that our performance just keeps going. And I think the, the curve is upwards. So I, personally like to thank all the staff for their continued efforts and um, no doubt members would as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Paul. And uh, thanks to all the officers for uh, making sure that we're performing really well and to councillors. Uh, item 7, confirmation of the TPO 605-90 Utoxter Old Road. Thank you, Chair. Yes, we, we have um, the 
TPO, the, I think the, the relevant pieces, thank you, James, on the slide, you, you have a potential group order and two single trees on the prominent corner of um, Stepping Lane and Utoxter Old Road. Um, we have concerns, very prominent trees, as you can see from the slide, and the uh, objections raised to the, the TPO are raised in your report, and notwithstanding the objections that have been raised, my view is we can confirm the TPO and then deal with any subsequent planning application, because the granting of a planning permission overrides a TPO. But it's a major factor you take into account in the, in the assessment of the application. So um, just because we are seeking to protect those trees doesn't mean that development will not come forward at some stage on this site. And we're aware of uh, development aspirations uh, as explained in Knights's letter on Appendix 5. But my concern is I need to protect those trees now rather than leaving them vulnerable. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I think uh, it's probably the right way to go about it. It saves any comebacks afterwards. Item 8, which is... Uh, Chair, did you want to uh, take the... A vote on the oh, Councillor Kerr. Um, thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm not sure of the history of these particular trees, but they look to me as if they might be ones that had been planted as part of a landscaping scheme probably, I don't know, 40 years ago. And I think that's quite interesting because when we think about our landscaping schemes and approving those, we tend to look at, think of them as something that we're doing for now or for you know, next year or for three years ahead. And it's not until you look back at something like this and you actually realise that a landscaping scheme is something that we're doing as much for posterity as we are doing for the short term. If this may be part of a landscaping scheme and I think that's, that you know, that's, we could learn something from that in that this is an area that is significantly short of tree cover. Uh, one of the other pictures showed us the tree that is part of the housing association which was almost certainly a landscape tree. Uh, landscaping planted as part of the landscaping for that development. Um, so let's, let's look ahead and think about landscaping for the future and not just for a few years, particularly in the current climate. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kerr. Uh, nobody else? Well, are we all in favour of Paul's recommendation? Carried, thank you. Okay, item eight now, applications to be considered tonight. There is only one, it's on pages one to 67 of your uh, agenda paper. And to tell us about this uh, is Laura. Thank you, Chair, and good evening. Um, first is a number of housekeeping items just to update you on. Two objections have been received, which have been circulated to you this week. Um, these predominantly relate to the impacts of the university's growth on local housing, the existing community, traffic, parking, and climate change and pollution, along with biodiversity net gain and improving sustainable travel. Further, the applicant has provided a response to consultee feedback, which was also circulated to you along with um, an updated design note, where the applicant has sought to give you um, a further rationale on, sorry, narrative on their design choices and rationale. A further preoccupation condition has also been agreed with the university to look at the existing vehicular access on Agard Street. This improvement will see the introduction of a continuous pavement along Agard Street, giving pedestrian priority. Additional information has also been submitted by the applicant to consider noise levels of the outdoor amenity space to the rear of the proposal between the proposal and Mark Eaton Brook. This has been reviewed by environmental health colleagues who remain to offer no objection um, and detailed masters will be secured under condition 18 as already set out within your report. Now moving to the main report. This full planning application seeks permission for the erection of a part five, part seven storey academic building. The building will be used as the business school for Derby University, with the applicant indicating that they aspire to enhance their city centre presence and facilities, creating a city centre hub within the area. 
The application is located on the junction of Agard Street and Ford Street and is highly prominent at this busy highway junction. The site is currently occupied by a surface car park and Sir Peter Hilton Court student accommodation. A member should be mindful that the council has already issued a prior approval for the demolition of the student accommodation and ancillary, ancillary structures as detailed within section two of your report. Section 1.4 of the report provides a summary of the internal configuration of the proposal and externally the building has a robust appearance comprising of a concrete exoskeleton finish with cladding, glazing and green walls. The applicant has provided detailed narrative of the design and access statement and subsequently justifying the external material choices. The roof will be covered in solar panels, the exact layout will be secured by condition to ensure that the varying roof heights do not imp impact um, on their productivity with overshadowing. The applicant has confirmed that the planting of the green walls will reflect their position, i.e. some of which are on the north elevation with walls being maintained by the applicant's grounds team and considering the planting species that they will be finished with. The proposal broadly complies with relevant planning policies and while slightly detached from the city centre by the ring road would be considered a highly sustainable location supported by policies CP22, AC1 and AC2. The introduction of a business school with ancillary facilities in this location is considered acceptable in land use terms. Section 7.2 of your report considers the proposal's impacts on heritage assets, both designated and non-designated. The application site sits outside the Frygate conservation area, but there are many designated assets nearby, as indicated within your report. Historic England have offered, offered no comment to the application, and whilst the built environment officer has not objected, they recommend that the scale of the proposal be reduced. Overall, the proposal is considered to have a less than substantial harm on heritage assets, but this impact will be outweighed by the overarching public benefits detailed on page 52 of your report. From a design perspective, development of this gateway location and providing activity and frontage to the ring road is extremely welcomed, along with the introduction of landscaping, green walls and softening of the harsh landscaping and opening up of the setting of the Mark Eaton Brook that sits to the north of the application site. These principles all broadly comply with policy CP4, CP3 and GD5. A number of consultation responses have raised concern about the external materials with the applicant providing a further rationale which was circulated to you. The applicant inclu application includes a material strategy but the exact materials have not yet been agreed but will be secured under condition 3. The comprehensive comments of the Council's Highways team are set out within your report and the proposal seeks to provide accessible parking, cycle parking, electrical cycle parking and amendments to the existing vehicular access on Agard Street which will now provide pedestrian priority. There are no highway impact concerns but Section 106 will secure a travel plan and curbside assessment on Agard Street once the business school becomes operational. The proposal has strong, a strong sustainability focus as, sum, as summarised on page 55 of your report and will improve biodiversity and tree coverage across the application site and therefore is acceptable in terms of relevant policies in this regard. Furthermore, matters relating to contaminated land, air quality and noise can be dealt with by condition and no objections have been received from con consultees in respect of these matters. There is one matter outstanding as you will note from the recommendation. The Council's land drainage team has offered no objection to the proposal, however the Environment Agency has a holding objection in place, which requires the submission of an updated flood risk assessment, which requires additional modelling. The applicant and the EA have agreed a scope of works and are proactively working together to resolve this objection, and the applicant has indicated the updated flood risk assessment will be submitted by mid-June, with parties being confident that this matter can be resolved. The report provides a detailed assessment of the proposal, its impacts and benefits, and is acceptable in policy and land use terms. The proposal is therefore recommended for approval, subject to resolving the Environment Agency objection and completion of the Section 106 agreement as detailed within your report. And Chair, you have two speakers this evening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Laura. Uh, I believe the first speaker is Mr. Longworth, University of Derby. You have three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm here representing the University of Derby in my capacity as Director of Estates. My name is Carl Longworth, and I, I thank the um, Chair for the opportunity to, to address the committee. 
The New Business School is the first phase of an ambitious city master plan recently announced by the University. You will see significant development in the area around One Frygate Square, Ford Street, Bridge Street, Agard Street and Nunn Street. This will provide the University, the city with the University, even better place to recruit high quality students and academics, deliver outstanding teaching and research and be at the heart of the Derby's business community, enabling enterprise, innovation and productivity across the city and region. Environment is at the heart of this development. This iconic building will be net zero carbon both in its construction and its operation. We will divert 85% of the demolition, excavation and construction waste from landfill through its reuse or its recycling. The building design has taken a fabric first approach to reducing the overall energy demand of the building and roof mounted with photovoltaics for on-site energy generation. This will be a living example of a sustainable development the school will play a pivotal role in promoting sustainability and sustainable business practices in the region and nationally. This is a £70 million state-of-the-art building projected to deliver £150 million of gross value added in its first 10 years of operation. Working with KIA, our recently appointed design and build contractors, we also expect to deliver an additional £15.9 million of social added value, such as job creation, and CARE have committed to sourcing materials and labour locally. The University has a strong existing commitment to sustainable travel choices and active travel. With a net zero carbon building, we aim to further strengthen this. A framework travel plan has been submitted with a planning application, and a final version will be provided in due course. The University is also committed to working with the Council to review the parking arrangements along Agard Street and surrounding roads following the occupation of the Business School. To summarise, the Business School is the first step in the longer term development of a vibrant new city centre hub. This development will provide a locally distinctive and highly sustainable gateway building that makes efficient use of a vacant and underutilised brownfield site. A recommendation to grant planning permission will truly position Derby as a university city with global reach and regional impact. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Longwood. That was good timing, actually. You had another 11 seconds then. Uh, second speaker, Mr. Clasby. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, my name's Dave Clasby. I am here. Um, so I'm a local resident. My postcode is DE1. I'm also the chair of my local community centre, Derby Climate Coalition. I sit on the University Community Liaison Board. I'm a member of the Darley Ward Neighbourhood Board for the last 20 years. Um, we recognise, acknowledge and in fact welcome many of the aspects of this application. The university brings huge benefits to the city of Derby and certainly to this part of the city. So it is a, and it's a fantastic piece of work. However, we do have some concerns about the impact of the building will have on the local community and the number of students it will, extra students it will attract into this part of the city. Um, the first concern is really around um, the impact on the, the demolition and construction of the new building. Whilst the um, aspiration is for it to be carbon neutral, we feel uncomfortable that this will actually be borne out in practice. So that is our first concern, is over the con demolition of existing buildings and the construction. The second is over transport. The impact on the local community has been felt very keenly over parking issues, and we would like to see a parking permit scheme, free parking permit scheme, being offered to residents within that wider community funded through this application. The third one is on, well, and the fourth one are on housing. So our, my community is blighted, and it's very simple, it's blighted by to let signs. Because there are so many HMOs in the area, it brings the area down. It is possible for this council to bring in orders that would actually control the number of toilet signs. If you go to Nottingham, they ban toilet signs around the university quarter. I've got a toilet sign on my street that's been there for four years on the same house. 
The final one is on HMOs, which links in with the student accommodation. We welcome students into our community. They are a positive thing, but it is about having a balance. And that is a concern. It is possible to bring in planning restrictions so that all HMOs have to go through planning. At the moment, it's only those six and above. But you can bring in control over that. So those are the four main points. I'd also just briefly like to say that as a right to reply, the last time I spoke to planning committee, a senior councillor who represents a more affluent area of the city than mine did tell me that if I didn't like the changes that were happening in my community, I should move somewhere else. I'm afraid my community did not appreciate that comment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clasby. Well, I can only say that uh, you're right, and the senior councillor, whoever he was, shouldn't have said that to you because that's not what we sit here for. We're here to look after the residents of all the city and not just the affluent areas. So apologies from the committee for whoever said that to you. Laura, would you like to come back on any of the points? Yes, thank you, <coughs> Chair. Um, just, if I just pick up the points that you had just raised. Um, so in terms of the demolition of existing structures on the sites of the Sir Tilton Court, that has, it sits outside of this planning application. We've all, already dealt with the prior approval. Um, in terms of, obviously, the construction, we can look at um, working with the university to ensure that, to do a, a set an assessment of the proposal. Um, to, to see what they achieve going forward to ensure that they, they obviously meet their objectives um, in terms of, of being zero carbon. Um, car parking, my colleague Andy is here from Highways. I'll pass over to Andy shortly just with regards to the parking within the, the area. Um, but obviously, as the report sets out, we deem that this proposal will not have an impact um, from a highways perspective, but we have got the Section 106 in place to do a curbside assessment within the surrounding street, but I'll let Andy to provide further detail on that. Um, in terms of the housing, obviously this, is, this proposal is for an academic building. It's not mm. looking at housing in its, in its wider context or, or sort of the student housing that potentially will be needed or created. Um, and we will take on board, obviously, the points that you've raised, and I'm sure members will, will listen to the points you've raised with regards to, to HIMOs and the balance in, in the community. Um, we do have powers to look at, but there has to obviously be a process to follow with that, and I'm sure the university will, will take on board your comments. Andy, do you want to just pick up on the highways? Uh, yes, thank you, Laura. Um, just very quickly, I think Mr. Clasby's point about um, a permit scheme, well, most of the area... Uh, between probably Kettleston Road around the university um, and this area, it, they're all either resident permit only or a combination of resident permit and pay and display. Um, I think Mr. Clasby's point was about having free a free scheme. Um, it's a nominal fee, and I'm not sure that would be appropriate to 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 uh, give a free scheme in this area because obviously then the rest of the city would also require the same. Uh, the same scheme as well. So uh, I'm, I'm going to have to apologise and say that I think we have to still uh, charge for the uh, the permit scheme. Thank you. I'd just like to add, Chair, that we need to drill back to this application. Does this application generate the need for additional car parking or a permit scheme as a result of this proposal and I think what we've heard probably not but it's this application before you this building before you that we need to address tonight as opposed to the wider potential implications that we've heard about about high mows to let signs and uh, residents only parking schemes thank you chair thank you uh, Paul just to say Mr. Clasby that Although that what some of the issues that you uh, raised don't concern this application, but this committee, with the exception of Councillor Rawson, who's just joined us uh, this year, has taken it upon themselves to make sure that all HIMOs are sort of relevant in the area and are, are suitable for the residents. So we will be pursuing this as, as a... Uh, you know, sort of issue that we have raised since last year. We appreciate the fact that there's too many HIMOs coming up in Derby, and especially in terrace streets, and this is something that we don't like to see. But we will look at that, but unfortunately it's not for this application, but we, you know, you can rest assured that it's something that's upon our agenda for this year. 
members of the committee. Councillor Carr. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, I, I actually quite like this building. It, um, modern architecture is a, a, a bit of a Marmite issue. It depends on the eye of the beholder. But in its context there with the Copper Building on the other corner and Frygate Studios on one corner, I think it, 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 it sits well. I... Um, I'd like, I have a question, which I'll come to later. Uh, I there are a lot of comments in the section five from the design panel that I think I'd like some of those addressed. It is a bit overly dominant, and there's, there's talk about using block glazing for some of the, uh, the windows on the side and, and altering the colouring of the cladding and stuff like that. I, I, I'm not expecting them all to be addressed, but I think there are some good points to be made in that section. And finally, my question is, will the area on, on the side of the brook be open for anybody to go and sit in there, as well as students? Because I think it's, I, I like Mark Eaton Brook, and I used to walk up and down there quite a lot, and I'd like it's opening up the other side would be a big benefit to the city, I think, Chair. Thank you. Did you want to come back on that, Laura? I can't, yep, certainly. Um, in terms of, of access to the brook, um, the university have indicated that it won't be closed off, um, so you'll be able to sort of use the pedestrian links through, so that will include the links around to, to the brook. Um, in terms of, of the materials, um, yes, there has been a number of consultation responses from the design review panel and obviously our built environment colleague with regards to um, the external appearance of the building. The applicant has looked at those um, but does not wish to, to make any alterations to them given um, the design of the building, that, that it is a fabric first building. They have looked at obviously achieving their zero net carbon so they are, are looking at um, how that will sit with how they, how they are achieving that with the building and its design and also how it's being achieved inside the building. So where they have had those fixed panels and where the design review panel said, well, could we not have glazing? It's because of what's inside the building as well to ensure that it, it's all working together to achieve what the university wants to in terms of sustainability. Thank you, Laura. Councillor Kerr. Thank you. Um, I'll start by saying that I, I really appreciate that the, the university's aspirations here on things like having a, a sustainable building, both in construction and operation. I suspect that the construction side of this, at least, is doing quite a lot of offsetting. I can't see that the glazing, for example, is being made with, with zero, really zero um, produced, zero energy produced glass, um, or even glass that's probably come from, from purely wind energy and so on. So I really appreciate the aspiration. I, I'm not yet convinced that it's going to be delivered. <coughs> I also uh, appreciate the, the comment about the um, changing the, pri the pedestrian priority at the entrance to Sir um, Peter Hilton entrance, which I think is, is um, I really appreciate. Uh, and things like the travel plan and the commitment to that. So there's, there's good stuff here. I, I, I think there's a lack of coherence in terms of design. Um, I, I think maybe this could be some sort of feature that maybe university buildings could look in a particular way, maybe evolving over time, but they all seem to be different to each other. So from the design perspective, I'm, I'm not convinced, but I haven't got particularly strong views on that. The, in terms of the, the travel plan, I, I do have a concern about the, the way in which the university could be working better with the council to deliver it. I guess that quite a lot of students won't have all their lectures in this particular building and they may have to commute to some of the, one of the other university buildings. Coming to this one from sort of along Mark Eaton Lane is simple, particularly if on a bicycle, you've got a nice direct route, you've got good cycle parking, excellent. But going back the other way, it is not as simple. Going back the other way, you would have to use the Mark Eatonbrook walkway, and then you sort of get stranded on Bridge Street, and it's not a clear route, because the council has not yet created a coherent cycle route back the other way. But this is an opportunity for the university and the council to move together and say, actually, we need that. You know, the university can say to the council, we need that improved. We should be including in the 106 agreement the extra funding to enable the council to provide the connections that we need. And I would like 
the, the negotiations, and it may not be a 106, it may be a 278 or, or whatever, but we should be able to say there is going to be a significant additional demand for cycle routes along that route so that people can get back to Mill Street without having to cycle illegally on the pavement or have to get off and wheel, wheel their bicycle and cause congestion to, to other pavement users. So I think there's scope there which needs to be part of the negotiation that is already included, and I would ask that we amend the rather tight wording we have at the moment to enable those sorts of discussions to go on, and I think that's where it needs to go. The um, other two points I have is one on biodiversity, and obviously the uh, Derbyshire Wildlife Trust has generally given their blessing to this, but if we look at these, the um, skimp, the uh, image of the Mark Eaton Brook view of this. It appears that we've got access down to Mark Eaton Brook from this side. Now, if you go and look at that area at the moment, it is a very clear wilderness area. It's not an area which would be impacted on by human interaction. Here's a view of it. It almost looks as if we've got steps going down there to, to the, um, the, the river. Now, at the moment, in the book, at the moment, that area is just wildlife. It's wilderness. It's biodiversity. There's no human interaction with it. And that is where I think we might be losing some of the, the biodiversity. And I think we need to look, while valuing it for humanity, we need to make sure that we are not losing the value for other species. Uh, I just want to emphasize that and make sure that we're not getting a landscaping. I think there's a landscaping condition here as well. Let's make sure that we're not building it for humans, but we're also building it for everybody. And my final point is something I hadn't picked up until looking at the plans tonight, which is there seems to be a really big active screen at the entrance of the building. And I just wondered whether there was any more comments about the suitability of, if that is an active screen, and the suitability for that, and what impact that may have on things such as um, distraction factors for um, road safety, um, impact on, on the, the biodiversity that may be at that side of the building at night, whether it's going to be turned off at night, these sorts of things. Thank you. Did you want to come back on some of them points, Laura? Yeah, certainly. Um, a couple of those I'll leave for Andy with regards to the travel plan, if that's okay. Um, and also sort of picking up the active um, screen impacts on road safety. Um, the concerns about biodiversity and obviously the interaction with the brook, um, Derbyshire Wildlife Trust have looked at the proposal and looked at it, the, the landscaping scheme that's being put forward. And obviously we will be looking to... Um, to retain the biodiversity and ecological impacts um, of the scheme and hence why we've got condition 16 in place which requires a submission of the landscape and ecological management plan so which would be something which will be agreed for, submitted by the university and then agreed with Derbyshire Wildlife Trust to make sure that we haven't got any um, any negative relationships occurring with regards to obviously opening up that brook but the impacts on on ecology thank you Laura councillor Rawson Sorry, Andy, did you want to come back on that? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, just on, on the, the um, cycle links, I think what I would say is that, yes, that there could be improvements that could be made to, to fill some of those gaps and um, improve the connectivity. What I will say, though, is that this is part of a large master plan, um, and I think that will fundamentally change, perhaps, how access to this area will occur, in particular um, the bridge, the new bridge link across Mark Eaton Brook, um, and also um, probably how uh, Bridge Street will look in the end. Uh, so what I would say is that I think as part of that master plan, I think that's probably the stage where we look at those wider connections um, in relationship to, to how um, the, you know, the access might, might change as a result of it. I'll, I'll try. Um, I think Mr. Longworth will take away with him the, the quantum of this building isn't, uh, the, the, the amount of students generated, I think, isn't sufficient to warrant that. We've got it in the travel plan in terms of controlling and understanding the impacts 
and I think the and I wrote down master plan because the master plan I think is the key driver as Andy said to understand the changes how students get to and from the university up and down the brook um, and I, I'm not sure we can pin it back to this use this building um, in terms of biodiversity net gain <laughs> that's one of the things I'm going to be talking to you councillors about in the coming months BNG you'll hear a lot about it Matt knows all about it if you've got any questions ask Matt um, BNG is huge it's going to become the main driver for planning applications uh, after November 23 where it's obligatory but our current advisors are Derbyshire Wildlife Trust and as Laura said they're content with the scheme they're content with the landscaping proposal we've heard that the university wanted this to be their jewel in their crown um, and uh, a, a prominent um, building on the sustainable location uh, I think Councillor Kay you mentioned the the two um, not signs but the two adverts on the recess there uh, I think they in themselves are indicative to this application because um, Laura will correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure they will need advertisement consent for those signs anyway we, we look at those in terms of distraction to motorists at that prominent junction etc etc um, and how whether they are stat static or moving signs that sort of thing um, but I just wanted to try and wrap up those those three relevant points thank you chair Chair, yep. if I may just come back on the, the point about the routing. Th this building, maybe 2,000 people coming to this building. That is a big extra junk lump of people coming here. It's like a size of a secondary school. Um, and the university wants their travel plan to work. But to, make, to help make that work, we need to open the door to say, if you think your travel plan will work better with changes to our streets, we need to have the door open for that negotiation. And what I'm saying is not the outcome of that negotiation, but I want the door to be open to the university having that discussion with us and offering to put more money in so that the master plan, which we haven't got sight of, it isn't on the table in front of us. It may come forward in the future, but we cannot be sure of that. I think we should enable the university to have that discussion with us now so that their master plan, their, sorry, their travel plan can work better as soon as this building opens, if that is what they want to help us achieve. So it's opening the door, it's not requiring. Officers will have that discussion. I want the doors, door to be open for the university to, to ask the question of working with us on that subject. Thank you, So Lucy. I would recommend that we make amendments. I'm sure Paul can come up with some words to enable that to happen. Can we come to some words, Paul? Although Mr. Uh, Longworth is listening and I'm sure they'll want to be as uh, accommodating to us as possible because we want them to succeed and I'm sure they want to enhance our city. Did you want to add anything to that? I'll, I will sort out the wording. It's securing a travel plan, I'm on 8.5, securing a travel plan which also includes wider, um, wider connectivity with the university campus along, be wider, be better, improved connectivity along, the, on the side here, Brook Walkway. It's outside the application site, but it, I take your point, it's the connectivity between the two um, which areas. is chair white may need to have an impact on the section 106 because it may be a transfer of money for a traffic regulation order or a few drop curbs or something to us i think paul's uh, sort of going to do something with that and i uh, just want to move on a bit now while we get bogged down on this but as as i said earlier mr longworth is listening and i'm sure he won't want to upset you lucy uh councillor rawson thank you chair um you're welcome back. Uh, it's nice to be back. Um, I think um, we do um, we do need to recognise the green credentials of this this scheme. Um, I've been away for a couple of years, and um, I'd like to think that perhaps over that time, um, more of the planning applications that come before us are improving in terms of their green cr credentials. But 
it is really nice to see the university um, putting the environment absolutely uh, front and centre in this this application um, in terms of um, the aspiration for, for net zero, its construction and, and running. Um, it is, um, as, as we've said, um, very in a very highly sustainable location um, uh, in terms of access. There will be very few car journeys um, created by the people that will uh, the students and the staff that will be using this this, this building. Um, its location is close to other uh, university accommodation um, which will um, facilitate ease of access and encourage uh, enc encourage students and, and others to to walk um, t to this location. Um, so um, I think that's the first thing to say. It, it's really good um, to see um, to see the environment featuring um, so um, significantly in the application. Um, secondly, in terms of the um, the principle of bringing the university uh, students and staff into the city centre, um, is to be strongly welcomed as well. Um, I think as as a city. Uh, um, we need to improve the vibrancy of the city centre and all of everything the council's doing is um, uh, seeking seeking to do that. Um, so this will be um, an important contributor uh, in terms of bringing more people in and creating that uh, sustainable um, um, business um, to support other um, other. Um, businesses and um, facilities in the city centre um, so that is um, to be welcomed as well um, very strongly. Um, I think um, the other important thing to say is that this is a very prominent site within the city right on the corner of the, uh, the inner ring road there so um, it, it it's a, land, a landmark building really that we're looking to see there because it is such a prominent site and um, I think um, what we've got in front of us is a it's, it's a landmark building it's it's high quality um, it's um, I think it, in terms of its size and its massing it will fit, fit in with other uh, buildings nearby um, like to make a point about the um, the materials and cladding and uh, agree with um, what Councillor Kerr said in terms of creating some consistency um, in terms of the, the look of the buildings and um, we've got the um, obviously one frag eight square opposite which is um, another university building so maybe when we're looking at the um, um, at the materials and cladding, um, which I, I think um, was said that's still to be agreed, um, whether we can um, think about that consistency with uh, the copper building and other elements that we can bring into um, that, that we can bring into, um, into this new university building um, um, to create that sense of place and, and consistency across the two. Um, I think overall, um, though, um, though Chair, if, um, as the report says, um, hopefully we can get the, um, uh, the issues with the, the flood risk sorted out and um, it sounds from, as if the, the report information we've been given as if that is possible. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do that and, um, and move forward with this project. Um, Thank you, Councillor Rawson. We have Councillor Prosser and then Councillor Holmes. Okay. Um, so the uh, University City Master Plan would be very helpful. Obviously, the Council is very much aware of that Master Plan and the contents of it because they've used images from it and images of the rest of the University's developments in their Ambition Plan. Um, so it's something that this, in isolation, um, it's very hard to make a good judgment on because it's part of a much bigger plan of which we have no or limited knowledge. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of this building. I don't, I've got nothing I can object on. I think it's probably going to do a very good job. Um, but I don't want to be played like we have in previous applications in my ward recently. 
So um, again, I can't object, it seems fine, but as it's part of a bigger plan, it would be really helpful if that information or some information could be brought to the committee so that we could properly assess what is actually going on here. Um, because time and time again, we are let down or details are hidden from us so we cannot make an appropriate judgment. So that's all I can say on this. Um, again, HMOs, councillors constantly riling against HMOs. We all have a problem, yet the council refused to do something. We really need to get this sorted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prosser. Councillor Holmes. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, personally, I think this is a, an extremely robust and um, well-balanced well um, application. I think it certainly delivers uh, very high standards in terms of the environment. Um, and obviously, if we've heard, it has, it's going to have uh, very significant economic benefits for the, for the city as a whole. Um, I like the design as well in principle. And as Councillor Rawson said, I'm sure there's, there's um, some tinkering that can be done to improve that further. But fundamentally, I think it's a, a very good the design uh, and layout as well. Um, I think the committee could debate all night about some of the issues surrounding the actual main application, but I think we should focus on, on what we see before us here in terms of um, the overall proposal. And I think that um, it's something which I'm going to certainly support and I hope the committee do too. Um, it has massive benefits for the city and I think that um, any issues that have been raised, any concerns that have been raised that I've heard so far can certainly be resolved and have probably been addressed in terms of assurances that they will be resolved in the, uh, in the reports that I've, I've uh, have read, Chair. Paul, just to come back on one point, Chair, and I, I, the university are here, I am sure that any future applications that come in will be seen and set within the context of that master plan. I think um, the master plan has evolved um, at a slower pace than this. We've got this application before us. We have to determine this application. As it stands, is it or isn't it? it, it it's, it's a Marmite building, as we, we've heard. Um, but in, in its context on this site, in the full knowledge that we've already approved the demolition of the, the buildings on the site. So on this corner, is this building okay or not? Future applications, we will have that. I'm sure we will have that setting. This is part of a jigsaw of a wider master plan. But um, I, I think this one, um, we need to determine it based on its own merits. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I agree with that. I mean, it would be helpful if we could have a look at other buildings that might go up, but it's not possible at the moment. The building itself, as Councillor Holmes said, I mean, it, it, it's not necessarily the most brilliant building, but it does sit in well with the area. And bearing in mind, you know, the sort of date when we had the Bishop Lonsdale College turn into the university, I think we were 91st out of 92nd in choice for people to come here. And people from Derby were leaving here to go to other universities, and now we're lucky enough to have people from, you know, sort of uh, established universities wanting to come here rather than stay in Birmingham, Leicester, or, or whatever. As, as a city that's, uh, you know, has been at the forefront of industrial revolution, arrow engines, trains, etc. We needed something like this. We have got it. And I hope, Mr. Longworth, that you've paid attention to what's been said. As a committee, we look forward to working with you, but you know it has to be reciprocated. Where there are concerns of councillors or residents, I hope that you, know, you will be considerate in, in uh, trying to uh, assure people that you are not just about the university. You are thinking about the city as well. But I, I welcome this, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, it, it, it will set, sit in well with the rest of the uh, sort of uh, buildings around there. And I really, as I said, it may not be the best design, but it is adequate. It will suffice in terms of what we need it for, and it will set in well with the area. If there's nothing else, would somebody like to move it to the vote? All those in favor of the recommendation with the conditions, yeah, with the conditions on. Okay, I think, uh, I think that's unanimous. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Longwood, Mr. Clasby.
and uh, the committee uh, moving on to the next item which is uh, potential site visits uh, Paul's going to tell us about them thank you chair um, Kingsway retail park uh, there's nothing to see apart from the unit that's already there. This is a change of use of a, of a condition, restrictive condition on goods that they want to sell. Um, I think all members know this site and its implications, and it's a policy issue for us to grapple with. Moving on to the next one very swiftly, um, Windsor Park, Blagreaves Lane. This is change of use from a care home to 14 apartments. I think uh, it might be worth a visit for those of us that are concerned about uh, parking issues and what have you. What do you reckon, Jed? I'll go with you, Chair. Yeah, that's okay. worth a visit. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, 220 Osmiston Road. I think, Chair, you've already been here, had a site visit here. This was... Um, this is the former hotel, and they want to uh, build 42 units now on this side. Uh, I don't think we've been here, actually. This is the La Gondola, isn't it? La Gondola. It? No, we, yeah, we were at the engineers. You were, yes. Yeah, we were at the engineers. Now, this one we do need to pay a visit to. That's, that's two down. Um, Derby Hillsway, uh, sorry, Derby High School and Hillsway. Um, this is an application for additional car parking, uh, relocation of netball, tennis courts, playing field, and erection of a refectory and art and design building. This isn't easy to see from the height of the space, it's all taken from the top height of the I don't think you'd be very contentious with having extra parking there, people would be grateful for it. So, are, are, we, are we taking that for a site visit then? Yes. Yeah. I'm not doing very well. We need to bring Mr. Woodhead back. Um, <clears throat> right, we're not going here. Um, <laughs> this, is, this, is, um, this is Smart Park. But the application is just for the infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure was previously shown to us on a master plan and we knew where the individual plots were going. They're now coming to us with an application for the, the infrastructure to almost set in stone the, how they're going to access to the site and how it's going to be laid out apart from the buildings that they've already done. So it's a, it's a, it's a massive investment for them to do the infrastructure up front. Chair. Yeah. Chair, I think we can go if we can use a helicopter. No helicopter for that one, then. thank you. Um, and this is the former Rolls Royce site. This is a variation of condition again for off site highway works in relation to this scheme. This scheme has been before committee. It, there's no need for, a, I don't think, a site visit for this. And finally, um, this is again a variation of condition. This is uh, to amend the landscaping scheme on this site. Again, it's, it's the little store, which is, uh, yeah, I was gonna say under construction, shows how I'm behind the times. Um, again, I don't think this need to. No. Thank you, Chair. So I, did, I, I resurrected it. I got three site visits. Well, you left to thank Matthew for that. I mean, he's on your side. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, have a good evening.